Oh, beautiful, beautiful day. So as we get started, I'll just do a quick intro for the show. This is Mentor in the Mirror podcast. Rather, right now we're currently live on Facebook. If you're listening to the audio, we've been doing live streams every day with amazing heart open, heart centered, purpose driven entrepreneurs of varying types from financial advisors to money mentors to people to help with your business, your health. And today um, we have another amazing angle and I'm excited to introduce Anahata. And for those that aren't familiar with us, this is Ta. And this is Cole. <laughs> we are Ta Cole. <laughs> and this is Mentor in the Mirror podcast. So let's kick this off, Anahata, and just if you could bring us in and ground us in the chaos of where everyone's been before we even start, and then just let that guide you into introducing who you are today, right now. Beautiful. First of all, thank thank the two of you for just being beacons of light in the community and and being present with your medicine, your magic, and um, your heart centered transmissions. Thank you. You know we need pillars of light rocking it right now. <laughs> So thank you for doing what you guys are doing to be a, a big thank part you. of that. Yeah, for sure. We need we need each other at the at this time. And so I know it's been a full day or whenever you're tuning in, uh, even if it's nine in the morning, uh, you know, <laughs> wherever you are, whatever time it is, we can be slammed, uh, you, you know, with um, just overwhelm at any time of the day. And so before we dive into this whole exploration about how you can navigate these challenging times, I just want everybody to just, <sighs> just take a moment to just close your eyes if you are able to do that and to just, oh, like just an audible exhale. And mm. just so that we're not moving with any residual yeah. from yesterday, the day before, the week before, the year before, the decade before, the lifetime before, even from five minutes ago, so that whew, we can melt away anything that isn't now, that isn't needed, and we can reset the nervous system to come back to center, to come back to calm presence with just a few more slow inhales, and then just hold on. <laughs> And then a long exhale. Yeah. Another inhale, nice and slow, nice and long. Just hold that for a moment. And then a nice long yeah. exhale, as if everything is just melting off. And so that you can come back to the true essence of who you are that you can, your nervous system and your body can come back to its center point so that your mind can be free of, of the chaos for just a few moments as you reset and remember and recenter. Oh, so, and no, Ocean word up. yeah, you know, that's, I think, really valuable for all of us to just pause and breathe when we get into that overwhelm because it's happening frequently. Um, throughout the day for most of us. And, you know, as that happens, you know, just step back so that the physical body, the emotional body, the energetic body can come into reset so that your next move is not coming from a contracted place. So, um, because there's lots of decisions, lots of interactions, lots of choices to be made. So this is a time to really be present with that. We all good? Yep, we are. Yep. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> sharing. And, uh, are we all good? This, like, he was trying to do the sneaky share, the sneak share, and then it was less sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> so, there so, you go. so anyway, um, you asked who I am. My name is Anahata Ananda, and I'm a shamanic healer and soul guide. And I'm based here in Sedona, Arizona. And my business is Shamangelic Healing. We're really blending that compassion of and presence of the angel and, and spirituality and consciousness with the courageous, bold connectedness and the fierceness of the shaman that's 
you know, able to navigate into the darkness and into the shadow, like those sh the shamanic principles of going into the darkness, being honest and courageous, and then finding what's there and emerging with truth, with clarity. And so my passion is to really help people with their spiritual awakening, with their core healing, with their personal empowerment, and to really navigate into their soul's mission. And boy, at this time, we are certainly being activated uh, to find uh, our soul's mission. Anything that isn't in alignment with that, anything that isn't sustainable, anything that isn't really true and authentic to who we are at a deep core level is just, you know, it used to be we get a little wake up call. Now it's just like, ah, screw it. We're just going to take that from you. <laughs> so, right. You know, it's like time's up with the teddy bear. Time's up with the little knocks. Everybody's just getting flattened. Like, no, nope, you can't have that anymore. <laughs> um, and in that, so many things that we are connected to and attached to are are being pulled from us. And um, so it's a time to really just be present with the transformation that is happening because it's it's happening. It just is. And it's time. It's needed. It's what we've actually all asked for at a soul level. We've already said yes to come back at this time when we could rewrite a paradigm that is more sustainable, more thriving, more authentic. And so all of the ways that we are kind of hooked into the matrix or into any system, thought, belief, habit, lifestyle, um, uh, uh, addiction, uh, Anything that isn't in alignment or sustainable is just like not happening right now. And so it is not. It's yeah. not. It's, it's, it's definitely not happening. And you know, on on so many levels, I really like the way you rock. I love the way you rock, and I love the way where you come from. You know, the shamanic whole the whole deal with you is uh, intriguing to me because you come from this space of being so uh, spiritual, spiritually connected. And you still rock the science space at the same time. And and for there's a lot of people in, in the entrepreneurial world that have a really hard time with what we call woo woo and, and being and being ultra spiritual. And and you bring it all together. And I really appreciate that because I'm a science, I'm a science person and I'm I'm kind of out there too. So I really appreciate how you groove and how you bring things together. I mean, you know, being uh, being at one of your events a couple of weeks ago was mind blowing for me. And, uh, you know, what you bring to the table is a, a way to, to get people to ground themselves physically, emotionally, spiritually, and all of that stuff. So, I mean, I really love the way you rock. And, and I think that at this time where it's, it's going to be like you, you, you learn how to ride the wave or you get dragged with, <laughs> you know, in an undertow, uh, you but know, we're the, all going for the we're, ride. We're for the ride. <laughs> where the, do you want to be within the wave? The way you bring people in is unlike anything I've ever experienced. And I've done a lot of work. Thank you, Ta. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. It, it was an honor. This what you're referencing a shamanjelic breathwork ceremony that we did in Austin in February. And, um, and it is, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're spiritual, what, what, wherever you find your, whatever you label yourself, wherever you are on the journey, like literally, all systems need to be on and connected. We can't just be in the earth realm right now. We can't just be in the 3D without bridging into some form of higher intelligence, consciousness, awakening. Um, and we can't just have our head in the clouds either. We can't just be like, everything's rainbows and unicorns. It's like, whoa, there are some real practical decisions to make in the 3D about what is physically sustainable for this human body how do I actually physically take care of my needs? How do I financially take care of my needs? How do I stay in community and, and you know, connection? And also that's all kind of in the, what, what in the woo-woo we would call the root chakra. You know, <laughs> like they're, okay, the woo-woo terms like root, grounding, community, safety, and our, or definitely our survival mode, which all sticks in that lower, you know, lower root center is being rattled to the core right now. Our physical health, our finances, our stability, all of that is being rattled because it wasn't built on solid foundation. It was built on sand, things that aren't sustainable. Um, the, the habit of when my emotional body gets triggered, I just go in to sedate it. Like that's not sustainable. And yeah. 
And um, right now, all of those things that we're attached to in the material realm, who are we without those? Because if our identity is deeply woven into our material, our bank account, um, what we, you know, what we own, even our roles, even our, you know, our jobs and careers and all of that, our identity as what we are in relationship, anything like that. If we are attached to anything um, that's being dissolved from us. And so it is a spiritual awakening crisis because it would take that to get us to drop to our knees to be like, what the hell? Like, yeah. like uh, who am I? Because it's, it's an existential crisis. The coronavirus is the crown. Corona means crown. And so it's awakening the crown for us to be connected to a, a higher perception of who we are. And so in this journey of, well, who am I outside of these things is a soul awakening question. And so for those of you that, you know, for you say a lot of your, you know, listeners that are, are, you know, entrepreneurs and really focused on their business and career path, it's like our next, our next navigation into who we are has got to include a higher soul's mission. We don't have the option of just being plugged in without being plugged in with sustainable practices for ourselves, for humanity, and the planet. That's yep. just that's just it. That's just what it is. <laughs> you know, we can try to rebuild it the old way again, and it will still be built on sand, and it will all dissolve and crumble again. And then we get a chance to rebuild again and again. And and this isn't the first time humanity has crumbled. It's just it's just a big one. It's a big. It's a global one. It's the biggest globally probably since the dinosaurs were extinct or wiped out, if that is how it happened. And with, with what we are seeing is like, this is now the time for the instinctual evolution. We've been living in very compartmentalized states. I might have my spiritual practice. I might have my physical practice. I might have my mind practice, but this is the calling of the integration of all the parts. It's like the, the unifying of the selves which is the person I am at work is not the person that I am with my friends is not the person that I am at home. It's the, for me, it's the calling of the unification of the self with the collective, right? We're alone in this together, this process. And if you look back at the last hundred years, even the last 60 years of evolution in our, uh, j even just since the industrial revolution, that, we were still and have been participating in systems that don't work anymore with the advances in technology and community and society. And so this is the opportunity to look at what was working, what wasn't. And it is a complete disintegration of many systems, um, which for a lot of people is terrifying, especially if you depended on other people to tell you what to do from the morning you wake up till the time you go to sleep. Now the person in charge is you. And what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I, I love that. It is absolutely disintegrating. And what I find, the question, it's wild, because the question I see myself asking multiple times a day, is this sustainable? Whether it's this, you know, buying this product, is it sustainable? Like toilet paper. It's not sustainable for us to deforest the planet to wipe our fucking ass. For sure. <laughs> you know yes. Mean? It's not sustainable. We need to find another way, like mm. another product, another process. That is one example as people are going through the toilet paper crisis, which that that part of the body is connected to the root you know, right. survival. And it's just like these practices aren't sustainable and making this business de decision. Is this sustainable in my business? Um, spending this kind of money traveling this much using fossil fuels uh, is this sustainable and i keep asking myself that that question across all of the areas of life just like you were saying cole about how you know my personal life my professional life how i treat myself putting myself last is that sustainable taking care of everybody else at the expense of me is that sustainable eating this food is it sustainable i mean blueberries coming all the way from new zealand on a boat and then a truck and then, you know, a and a train and then a truck again um, isn't sustainable. And so where, where, how we consume water, how, how waste is being, 
processed, how, how, how we handle recycling and trash, like, is it sustainable how we handle food production, all of this? And I'm finding that this fabulous, amazing, uncomfortable experience that the coronavirus has brought to all of us is this question, is this question, including the government, how we, how we deal with credit cards in this country um, globally how we deal with with spending, is it sustainable? And so I invite everybody listening and watching just to kind of, when, you, when you're going through your everyday life right now and you're rubbing up against a choice to let go of something, it might be showing that it's not sustainable anymore or it might need a flip or a, a shift or adjustment to be sustainable. You know, just something is, it's like, well, I could buy this vegetable or I could grow this vegetable. Do I need to buy it chop, pre-chopped for me in plastic or I, can I just actually buy the vegetable itself? Right. You know? um, and can I take the seeds from this one vegetable <laughs> and plant it in dirt and actually not have to go drive a car to a grocery store <laughs> to get the, that, same, that same food when I can actually grow it? And so we're actually coming back to our connection to Mother Earth again, our connection to the elements and seasons and how to rest and serve and release and plant and, and work and then harvest. We're coming back to the cycles and the seasons. And from a shamanic perspective, we have been in perpetual spring and summer for way, way too many years or decades. And of course that's gonna create adrenal fatigue and heart problems and high blood pressure. Of course that's gonna create anxiety and um, chronic fatigue and so forth. And, uh, and you know, this is an invitation to look at every area of life. Can I keep doing this choice or is this trying to show me something? And every, every time throughout the day when a little discomfort or a lot of discomfort rises, because it, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty intense. And so when something rises, I'm looking instead of ignoring it or sedating it or just trying to push through it, it's it, the invitation is to get curious. What is this discomfort trying to show me? Is there something I'm not listening to is there another way I can do this thing more sustainably, more, effect more effectively, um, and more cost effectively too? Because we're we're in a spending epidemic as well, yeah. um, because people aren't having savings to navigate a rainy day anymore. Which is what our grandparents learned from the depression: is hey, you know, save for a rainy day because they happen. This is one of those, you know, big ones. Yeah, you know, when you speak about sustainability, you know, I've had a have had plenty of conversations with people about sustainability, and they people tend to speak about sustainability without knowing what we're looking to sustain, and what we mm -hmm. what I believe we're human beings are looking to sustain is human beings. So, in order for human beings to be uh, longevitous, the planet has to be uh, in a particular, and there has to be a particular environment that's that's uh, livable for humans. Just like there has to be a particular environment that's livable, that's functional for a virus or whatever. Right. And and in the way that we're living, and it's not just the way we consume; it's also the way we reproduce. And people are reproducing other human beings in a function in a way that's not sustainable for human life. We are at seven and a half billion people. And I think in the next 20 years, we're slated to, to hit 8 billion. Okay. So that's 500 million people in the next 20 years. That's a lot of people. And the, the, the way we're utilizing resources, the amount of resources that we're utilizing, it's going to be hard for us to actually create bodies with the amount that we're utilizing the way we're utilizing it, not for the planet to sustain itself. It will continue to be here. And so, you know, when, when, when people die, we're still embalming their bodies right? And we're burying them in boxes in the ground. And this is not sustainable for the earth to actually maintain itself. These are the things that I've been talking to people about. And I'd, I would really love to hear your stance on human reproduction and, and the vibrational quality of the human beings that we are actually bringing into the world and what we're doing with the, the, the leftovers of the people that are, that are passing that we have right now. Yeah. So this is, um, 
you know, we're, we're accepting traditions without questioning them. Mm -hmm. The tradition of Christmas consumption and waste and buying something and wrapping something and having it all, all of these packages, uh, you know, that doesn't mean we can't love, um, love our family on, on the holidays, but we, we are just accepting traditions without questioning does this still make sense with the, the current population? Does it still make sense to produce plastic this way? Does it still make sense to, um, to reproduce this way? Does it still make sense to, um, to bury our dead in this way? And this is all attachments and traditions. Yeah. What were you attached into? Well, this is the way we've always done it. And the same thing goes with factory farming is, is that farmers that, you know, my, my, my uh, father and, and grandfather was, were farmers in Montana. And my grandfather, you know, when they, everything was wild on, on the land and, and as it got harder to sustain cattle and, and growing things, then here come here came government subsidies and it, and it basically it wasn't sustainable to grow beef in that way and so government subsidies came in and also what happened at that time is well we'll just move to factory farming and we'll move to cheaper ways of doing it and we'll use to we'll do it automation and we'll we'll feed them this to get more money because um it you know, we're struggling to feed our children. And so, yeah, we'll use genetically modified seeds. We'll feed them this and we'll, 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 we'll let machines do things. And we haven't really thought about the ethical impact of how we make food, how we make children, how we do our, um, our, our, our transition or death practices. And, and this happens actually at an individual level to say, and in my family tribe, am I going to pass this on? And it's if we're participating in evolution, it's our responsibility to actually evolve past what was given to us. Yeah. Whether for, for better or worse, whatever our parents and grandparents gave us, like, hey, pinch a penny uh, from my grandparents. That's that's not a bad thing, you know. <laughs> you know, to be mindful of spending and and to repurpose things, to grow your own food. This is all of the things that I learned. Um, you know, some of the things that I learned from my grandparents. And we want to be able to take the things from our grandparents and our, and our bloodline or our parents and, and, and keep the things that, that make sense. And it is our responsibility, and I appreciate you asking this, Ta is like, it, it does this still make sense as far as any of the questions, reproductive, uh, all of it, how we eat, how we grow. And it's our responsibility in this bridge generation to say, hey, I don't want to pass on traditions that are not going to last for seven generations. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and we haven't been thinking like that seven generations ahead. We haven't right. been thinking like that. We're thinking about today, me, mine, and ours. And we want to rise above back to crown again and look at the bigger picture and say, let me think about my brothers in China. Let me think about my family, uh, my, my animal relatives that live in the ocean. Is this sustainable for all of us? And so we're actually getting out of that root chakra survival mode, me, mine, and just my family unit. And also looking at how can I be a voice for change, not shaming the way it's been, but with a positive, informative awareness that says, hey, you know, actually, if we play this forward, if we play this formula forward about the landfills, plastic, product, you know, uh, you, you know, procreation, death, um, it doesn't take us very far. And, and that's what they're talking about with all of environmental sustainability with what's happening on the planet. We're like, we got 11 years going like this. And even if we reverse everything immediately, which Mother Earth and the coronavirus is trying to do, Agreed. She's trying to she's trying to help us pause long enough to reflect collectively and all of us at the same time. I guess brilliant what is happening right now. It's, it's positively yeah. brilliant. And those questions that you're asking and, and so many others are, are ha, ultimately go back to sustainability. Is this mm -hmm. sustainable? And 
what kind of life if we are if we're wanting to create a new paradigm then we also need to start building it you know if the old systems are crumbling and we're all still you know somewhat attached to the old systems then you know it's people like you you guys it's people like me it's people like those listening and watching that have the opportunity if we unhook from our panic and if we unhook from our identity and our attachments long enough which this virus is giving us the opportunity to do that to breathe dream and envision into well what could it look like and if so what are the steps to get there right. and that's and and we've got to we we've got to have our gps set on what is sustainable then in all of these areas and mm -hmm. i love you know i hadn't heard people talking about that that particularly china um had to deal with that um decades ago when they started their population control uh, protocols in in china where they were limiting production uh you know procreation ra rather in families mm -hmm. and because yeah. they had to think about that they had limited these and they still have limited resources and they're like hey we need to control the population they saw that they were thinking ahead you know uh, right and, and 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 it had to be done on a governmental level and and what what i'm interested in showing people is that people can make this individual decision to fortify the collective from having uh, we we have fortified individuals so the collective is fortified where people are actively choosing to not procreate or you know or or procreate strategically and have one kid instead of five kids you know instead of having a house full of people running around that it's difficult to nurture and take care of especially in a world like today where there are so many things happening people are multitasking in so many levels how can you really nurture a human being to a space where they are they are whole you know if you have five kids or four kids or three kids running around the house it's very challenging if you're going to work your 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 partner if you have a partner is going to work and everybody is serving systems of government systems of finance systems of of uh, capitalism and and systems of religion and we are not enhancing this these individuals and so this is also a, not, a, a practice that is not sustainable having a bunch of kids that you really can't nurture they get lost in the storm and then they get lost in 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 this space of loneliness and as a nurse working in the hospitals as long as i have people have heard me say this millions of times loneliness is the death of all human beings mm -hmm. when we are alone in ourselves when we cannot be ourselves the depth of in of, of dishonesty that comes from inauthenticity causes physiological disruptions in the human organism and and so you know when we have these spaces where we can have these conversations and people can be like look i, I really don't want to have kids right now why I, I, you know i'll have kids later in life and i want to be able to nurture that child that is part of the sustainability of this planet for human life i believe is to be able to consciously step back from having to just you know you got to have kids by this time or you're an old you're an old maid and you all of these old traditions that fortified the human race being here for as long as it's been are not functional anymore these traditions you know, are prisons what mm -hmm. i i just want to honor the sensitivity with which you're speaking because i can i can feel it deeply you know as it's a tender place i can hear it and um, and it's passionate and personal, I feel, uh, for you. And I want to acknowledge that the the other piece that goes right in alignment with that is how we raise children and how we have gone from communities to, like you said, isolation and being alone, where a single mother is raising kids by herself in isolation mm -hmm. without aunties and uncles and brothers and sisters and other kids around. And so... The other thing that we've moved out of that has caused strain on our on our on our collective on our physical body is two parents working uh, and 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 schools and also just to keep up with the Joneses, you know, to keep up yeah. with the financial and that whole that whole experience of the children go to school and parents go to work and then at night they're still on their screens because now they, we have to do homework or we have to you know this is how we're connecting and so that too is not sustainable and it feels like now as the kids are home from schools and parents are homeschooling 
Mm-hmm. And and um, that there's also this need and desire to share responsibilities and not be so much in our separate material pods, keeping up our separate material wealth. But when there is more of communal living where, oh, this person does that. They're great at the gardening. And this person is fantastic taking these eight kids to do some schooling here. And these kids over here are doing that. And Th- this these people are helping with that and and kind of like our old uh, our uh, you know more of our the tribal mentality that ha- that this fa- this country was really had going on before um, a non sustainable expansion of of, of um, patriots <clears throat> here to the states said hey no let's disband that tribal um, system and the tr- and the tribe. It was so much healthier to have grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, and different siblings of different ages. You had built-in support, people that had different skills, you know, were able to share the the resources and divide the labor. And those tribes did well. And they were able to move if things, if if things, they were a lot more sustainable to move um, with the environmental changes. If if there weren't animals, uh, then we're going to be resourceful. We're going to move the tribe over here, and we're going to we're going to hunt something else, or we're going to gather something else. And so they were able to be nomadic based on and being very flexible with environmental changes. And so, what has happened with I want me mine and our like my house my family is that those walls have actually isolated us, and it's been harder for parents that have chosen to raise families to do so because they feel in overwhelm and mm-hmm. they have to hustle and hustle more to have a nanny or a babysitter to help out just because they need the latest Nikes, you know, and yeah. <laughs> like, I know I was a single mom and, and, um, and I think that we're seeing, we're seeing that, that, that system as well to, to break down these walls that have separated families so that there can be more, communal living and more eating from the land and communal education. Yeah. Yeah. When, you know, when you consider uh, like in Israel, right, it was very common. They used to have a kibbutz. So it's like once the kids reached, you know, a few years old and they were a bit, you know, just ready to socialize with other children more versus being as dependent on the parents solely, the kids actually went to go all live together. So the children would be taken from the parents and they, They would see each other in the mornings uh, or actually mostly in the evenings. And it wasn't not that not that I'm suggesting this is the most functional structure, but just the difference in divvying up uh, responsibilities for everyone and where their strengths are, because some people that have kids, not the best nurturers. You know, they were never taught it. It's just not innately a part of who they are. Um, Not everyone's a great teacher, you know, whatever. And. It'll be interesting to see technology wise, what will be sparked in this current virtual reality that we are all co-creating in, will someone in your neighborhood meet on Zoom to help your kids while you go mow their lawn, right? Because they hate doing lawn work. This 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 is the new paradigm will be a lot more about bringing and sharing our particular skills and, and weaving them together. And in the, in the, in the Peruvian um, wisdom, in the Incan wisdom teachings, um, and they, they call this Aini or re- reciprocity. And this is, hey, you know, this person, is, their harvest is coming. Let's all go and help them with their potatoes. And then this person needs to uh, rebuild their barn. Then we're all going to go over and help with that. And, the, and, and there was a lot more giving and sharing of a particular skill set and Aini, which is reciprocity. I give to my neighbor and I also receive from my neighbor. And this means you know, the weaving of each of the skills or the strengths or the abilities that we have. And this is why our soul mission is so important. It says, hey, uh, somebody's great at colonics. Fantastic. You be that because <laughs> that's not Bend my over. Favorite. And, you know, and 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 somebody's fabulous, <laughs> yeah. right? You be the colonizer for their therapist. Thank you for taking that. And somebody else. Thank you for great. handling my shit. Yes. Right. <laughs> 
and um, and somebody else is fantastic at bookkeeping and somebody else is wonderful at farming. And this is a, a time to, instead of us all trying to be the same thing, do the same thing, is saying, hey, you know what? This is my mastery. This is my skill set. Hey, maybe you're the maybe you're the musician in the tribe and seeing how even if it's virtual, even if it's virtual and it's, it's saying, hey, how can I gift my magic into the community? Does it need to be in person? Does it need can it be over the phone? What do I have an excess of that other people that is easy for me to manifest that it, that I have an abundance of? Because it might be skill, it might be knowledge, it might be time. And then where does somebody else actually need that? And we're actually looking at where there can be more bartering and trading for things so that we unhinge a bit from the monetary system. Well, yeah, this and, is this is the whole idea of Tantra. Tantra is ebb and flow. You know, people tend to, to sync Tantra with sexuality and sensuality only. This is the ebb and flow of finance and, and monetary system, situations. This is the ebb and flow of relationship. This is the ebb and flow of how our how our society can be. And, and I think one of the things, and I wanted to touch on this with you because this is something that I've been dying to talk to you about, is the, the I feel I believe that the thing that blocks us from being able to connect in this deep fashion is the, the, the most toxic device that that's been used by society and that's shame. And it's, it blocks people from connecting on a deep level because the idea that something wrong is wrong with me that I can't share with somebody else or something is wrong with you, you can't share with me, it blocks us. What is your vantage point on shame and, and, uh, and how that affects us? Uh, you do all these tremendous ceremonies and people and you give people the space to be like, look, if you need to wig out and lose your shit and cry and whatever, I got you. Just be you. And that's how we flow. You know, yeah. we allow people to be in their full emotions and whatever they believe in without them being compromised as an individual uh, so that they can bring everything to the table like you're talking about. And yeah. everybody's gifts are valuable no matter what they believe in, no matter who they pray to or what color their skin is or language they speak. Everybody is valuable in what they have to bring. What is your vantage point on that with with uh, being sustainable and, and uh, moving forward as a society through this mess? Um, thanks for that question. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, because what we're looking at is as the primal part of us is triggered, that's the root chakra. As we evolve and as we grow and as we move up in our energy system up to, let's go, let's pass the emotion. Well, let's not pass the emotional body. What, is, <laughs> what sits, because that's the problem, um, right. <laughs> part of the problem. But what sits on top of that, the emotional body, is that our inner child is afraid. Mm -hmm. um, and we've all been hurt. We've all been judged. We've all been um, physically, emotionally, energetically rejected or bullied in some way. And so a lot of times we're reaching for those things out of a place of comfort. And so the core wounding that has happened from things said and done as in childhood or in family systems or in relationship system is that there's some unhealed emotional wounding that is happening because hurt people hurt people of course mm -hmm. most of us have heard this by now is is so one of the things i think um is that it's essential that we're looking at our core emotional wounds mm -hmm. and that we can honor those because it is and heal those and 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 be curious about those and learn how to hold a space for compassion for the part of us that got rejected for the part of us that was judged or shamed or bullied or oppressed or physically, emotionally or energetically abused. And I think this is a time to really honor uh, because as we, as we move forward and go to build things on more solid foundation, any parts of us that are unhealed then are gonna get woven into that foundation and it's built on sand again. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of that is taking care and learning how to honor our, our wounding because then what sits on top of that is that it's safe, which is, that's the second chakra before that, that emotional. Mm -hmm. The third is identity. It is okay mm -hmm. for me to be me. Even if I'm hurt, even if this is my jam, I like this thing and I'm a weirdo and I like this thing. And in, <laughs> and in seventh grade, you got judged for it or bullied for it. And this is a time when we need you to be that weirdo that says, yeah, tribe. This is my jam. I've got this tool. I've got this gift. I have this passion. I have this interest. It serves. That's why it was given to you. 
And we might have actually been bullied for being authentic before. That's yep. why these two things are connected. And we get to look at our guilt and shame in the emotional body and say, is this really true? Is this really mine? Did I learn that there was something wrong about me from somebody that didn't understand me? Yep. So what actually happens in here and and Cole was talking about this, hey, we have to bring these disparate aspects of ourselves together and integrate because what we're talking about here is four different areas that are needing to integrate. Um, because on top of that, the heart sits on top of that. How can I be loving, forgiving, and compassionate for those people that didn't understand me and also for myself that was so quick to throw myself under the bus right. just to be accepted, just to get approval, just not to be re you know rejected, just to get the guy or get the girl um, to fit in. And um, so we also get to be highly compassionate. This is the heart chakra around where, where have I, where have in my ignorance, unconsciousness, or immaturity made choices that weren't in my highest, uh, highest alignment and interest? Where did I give my power away? Where did I believe, uh, where, where did I let guilt and shame lead me or fear of judgment keep me small? And so even in that, as we're learning to see the bigger pictures of ourselves, because now we're opening the Ajna and the, the third eye for perspective to say, oh, can I see myself and the other person from a higher place? And so we even begin to look at judgment and um, that place around guilt and shaming from a compassionate place because we learned how to shame from people that shamed us. And so we want to, instead of shame people for shaming, right? <laughs> because then we're just perpetuating it, is to bring awareness to the shaming. Oh, that's that's something I learned or that's something they learned because we didn't know any better. And as we evolve and grow, we can say that too is not sustainable to shame somebody that that I, even if it's myself, for making a choice that I didn't quite understand, agree with, or, or respect at the time. And if we're going to be integrating as, as, uh, as Cole was saying about, this is a time to integrate things. Also, we're gonna be integrating with people that are on the completely other end of the spectrum than what we believe is true and possible. Mm -hmm. We are going to have to be able to compassionately not shame or come with anger or blame when we're negotiating when we are discussing possible solutions we're, we're with, with somebody that we see as part of the problem or we don't agree with their behavior, um, whether that's from a different political party, whether that's from a different uh, belief system around religion or politics or environment or whatever, is that we want to be able to be in this compassionate place and not lead with blame or guilt or you should should have or you're wrong or bad because then we're just part then we're just building on sand again yep. and this is a time to be looking at what do i need to cleanse what, where do i need to clean up things and so for your audience and we'll put it in the show notes and we'll, we'll put it in the comments below as well um a chakra balancing guided visualization just to kind of help people with hey how do i tidy up my own energy centers so that wherever I'm coming from, it's not from that place of unworthiness, fear, judgment, or unconsciousness that I'm coming as best I can in this moment, because that changes as well, that I'm coming from a balanced, clear, centered place of knowing who I am and confident that I have something to share, even if the person on the receiving end of me doesn't believe that in this moment. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Rock on, sister. Yeah. You Love know. it. <laughs> The, Love it. We were Love earlier. It. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, today you know, we uh, <laughs> today we had the chance. We recorded on Mike Dillard's podcast that will come out next week, and a lot of what you're talking about is exactly what we were saying. This, you know, people have been flocking to the jungles of Peru or Bali or whatever for these uh, shamanic experiences or psychedelic experiences. We're in one. 
right? Those experiences Hi. give you the opportunity to see yourself and not escape yourself. So you just saved yourself thousands of dollars <laughs> for an experience that entrepreneurs and business owners and, you people, know, shamanic yes. people yes, have been driving towards. And we, you know, we've all got the opportunity. And the thing is, these are things that if you're brave enough to face them now, you'll never be a prisoner again another day in your life. When you understand that, yes, things outside of us do impact it, but our internal environment creates the prison we experience. Mm. So what are we going to do in this moment to really um, not elevate, but open up, expand in every direction? Maybe we've been driving that financial structure. What would happen if you, if you, let yourself feel joy without money. That's expansive, right? That's when you start to be powerful, when you realize that your power cannot be taken away by finance because your worth is not uh, entangled in finance, then you're truly free. Then the rest is semantics and adjustments. And it's more like, uh, like we say, a condor you know, where you're flying these long distances and when the wind changes, you adjust, but it doesn't change that you're on a path and that you're going forward or you're going in a whatever direction you're destined. It's a freedom of knowing that whatever comes will not change the internal environment because you can just adjust to it. You don't have to think we, about it. 100%. We are in the the largest collective shamanic journey simultaneously than than ever the deep, ever. <laughs> darkest um dive into the unknown into the abyss into the shadow into the into attachment the theory ma matrix <laughs> like we are are in the midst of the biggest shamanic journey which is free um yep. <laughs> and and not all free, and it could cost you. Depends it's, on what you want to hold on to to fight for. Right, um, and this is, uh, you know, and I've I've said this. I said this on my other on, on my podcast. Uh, you know, I did like a, another little like let love go viral transmission about you know how to navigate these times. And the Hopi elders talk about this time in their prophecy that things are going to be moving very very fast. And those of us that are holding on to the shore super tight onto the roots of the trees that are on the shore of attachments, the illusion um, that that is safety, that that is st stability, um, are going to suffer greatly. And all of us are suffering greatly as half of us are, are like, OK, I think I can handle this. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to let go and go into the into the river and, and flow with things and follow my soul's mission and follow this evolution. And then another part of us is like, yeah, but wait, you know, wait, I'm just going to leave this one hand or maybe two hands just holding on to this. But substance. look, my feet are, my feet are dangling. That's yeah, pretty good, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm waving. I'm still holding. Like, hey, what's up? And, and that's where we're drowning ourselves. And uh, what I say we, because I'm in this too, of looking at every day, like peeling back that finger and that finger and that finger that is still just gripping so tightly onto anything. And so we get to look at, is that sugar? Is that uh, a particular house? Is that a business? Is that a relationship? Is that a limitation? What What is it that I'm still holding on to? And I invite everybody to just like, let's just chill again of, of just, <sighs> let's just breathe again. And I wanna just take us through like a little exploration here. As you close your eyes, if you're able to do so in this moment, and as you just envision that you're you're the seed inside the soil and that there's this safe place that you are in and in, inside the soil and just knowing that inside you is a seed it already has its purpose divined it already knows what kind of plant it's going to be. It already knows what kind of fruit it's going to make. That is its destiny. And it cannot hold itself back. And in the right circumstances, the seed will start opening. And the thing is, is that we are all already starting to open. But parts of us are still very much locked into that seed inside, underneath the soil. And so... Let's just take a moment to acknowledge that 
there's a cocooning inside the seed happening in that the universe, the sun is warm and it's starting to awaken you. And that the, the, the fertility of the soil, it's moist enough. The environment is just right to start awakening the seed to blossom, to sprout outside and defy gravity. Because gravity and the darkness is holding the seed, waiting and acknowledging that there is part of you, this soul, this un, unwavering part of you that is not negotiable, that nobody can take from you. Nobody can control this part but you. It doesn't matter what's happening outside with the virus and with quarantine or with any of that, that there is this part of you that is timeless, that is powerful, that is eternal. And as you dissolve everything away, let that seed speak to you. And what is the message that your seed seed of your soul is telling you right now what message does your soul have for you to remind you of who you are just allow a message from your soul to speak to you right now and what advice knowing that you would awaken at just the right time, which is now. What advice does your soul have for you, knowing that the sun is shining, that you are blossoming and you are coming here right at the time that you already agreed upon, that you would awaken at just the right time when the universe needed your seed, your fruit most. Let's just take a moment to receive advice from your soul. And just tap into that eternal feeling of who you are outside of this body that was alive and committed before you took your first breath in this lifetime and that will be alive and committed after you take your last breath in this body. And let's connect to that eternal, timeless, totally free, completely awake, empowered part of you that no one can take and yet you can allow to blossom at this time. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought it was important to just like like bring us back to what's what's really important is is remembering who we are deeply. Yeah. You you. <laughs> you, you, you are you. magic. Like, like Kapow, Kapow. Everything, everything you, you want is, is here, here right, right now. now. Girl, you're tremendous. I mean, really, you know, <laughs> I, I got to say, you know, I've, I've been on with a lot of people that have done meditations or just look to bring people into a space online. And I've, and I've done my best to sit through. I've had a lot of resistance in my body around people in this space that you just brought us into. Well, uh, you know, similar spaces. And I have never been uh, around a person who can bring me into this space without me feeling like there's some question there. And, and the, the way you show up uh, in your authenticity and yourself <laughs> uh, feels so aligned with how I sh with how I do my best to show up in the world. I'm just completely throwing everything on the table is uh is is truly a gift to me so i really want to thank you for bringing that because you make me feel safe on on our podcast to be able <laughs> to bring this type of activity to people that may not grasp the, the 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 gravity of of the work that you're doing i really really appreciate you and if anybody that's watching this has any doubts about this woman hey you can throw <laughs> that shit right out the window she's the real deal um you know when all of this stuff bakes over and if you can get to one of her uh, sound healing workshops, it's absolutely mind blowing. And we'll be planning a retreat with you once we have some more certainty around timelines and travel plans. Because for anyone that hasn't been to Sedona, it's incredible. And, a, and we haven't done a retreat in Sedona before. 
And I know that Rob Dial and Lauren are going to go back. So I have to plan it while they're there so that I can appease Toby, their dog. Um, otherwise, you know, Toby is the grandmaster of all things. So, you know, if anyone's interested in getting on that list, you can always get on Anahata's list. She has this amazing free offer that we put in the comments. I'll also have it in the show notes and get on our list if you're looking to stay up because we are all going to be craving some in-person connection to melt away some of the resistance to proximity because whether we realize it or not, we are creating patterns of distance right now because of conditioning. We are being conditioned for physical separation. And I can't wait to hold you and hug you and dissolve all of these walls once we are uh, clear to do so. Exactly, get our sprinkler action going. You guys. A little cabbage uh, patch. Yeah, right? Because our, our, our natural frequency on the other side of you know, as we were talking about the lowest frequencies we can human humanly feel is guilt and shame. Those are the lowest possible human emotions we can feel. And on the other side of that, even calibrating higher than love is bliss. Mm -hmm. And this is where we get to return back to that part of us that is silly and playful and giddy and authentic and and find our inner dolphin, our inner hummingbird. And that is just <laughs> You, have it. you can see on the camera right now if you're listening on the podcast. I'm right? reaching <laughs> on the table. These are these are our natural frequencies. Is 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 laughter medicine and and blissgasms. You know, I'm all about yes. blissgasms. Bliss and I, love and you so much. I just I first I wanted to say first of all thank you for your kind words. Like 100. percent Like thank you so much for your kind words. And I am absolutely looking forward to. Uh, our time together. We will plan something soon. Soon. Yes. We can manifest Agreed. it just like that. That's as as right. The are open, come like spring has sprung here in Sedona. And so we and will. And flights will be cheap because we've got economies that are going to have to get back online. So start right. saving those pennies, like grandparents said. You know, find that money, get those reserves together because we will celebrate. We will celebrate being out in the sun, in communion together, in community. And I know that I'm already like I've already got goosebumps in, in the idea of coming together. It's like the coming out of the storm, you know, like we're going to be emerging. And that is tremendous hope and tremendous excitement. I'm already in the bliss. I was going to say bliss balls. I'm in the bliss <laughs> balls of life. Hey, whatever's your jam, that's your jam. <laughs> so yeah, we will totally, we will totally be been do, be doing that, and I'm excited for that. You guys, like our our magic weaving together. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah! Uh, oh, we're ready. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the sister, laughter, the yeah. play, the medicine. Yes. The, you your ceremonies and the ceremonies that I lead, what we co lead out on the land, and Love it. you know. Um, until that happens, I'm here, you know, and, and I know you guys are here yep. and I'm looking forward, uh, you know, pop in whether you need some support. I'm offering, I'm doing a lot of phone counseling right now with, you know, just to kind of help. Uh, I, I, and I'm a certified high performance coach. I have all of these different things in my medicine bag. Um, but I do, of course, in-person sessions. But uh, during this time of quarantine, I'm all about 30 and and 60 minute phone counseling sessions to kind of give people tune ups with what they need. And, and how right can now. people, and how can people reach you for that? Shamangelichealing.com. And if you go under, you know, services, it's at the top right there. Um, as far as free stuff, there's also the Shamangelic Healing podcast and my Instagram has things on it all the time. Um, that's at Anahata Ananda. And um, I'm here at shamanjellichealing.com. And it is my mission to really inspire millions to shine. And the blessing of the two of you in my life um, is just, it's, it's such deep medicine for me as mm -hmm. well. And I'm looking forward to being on the receiving end of your powerful um, wisdom and ceremonies and, and weaving our magic together. For yes. sure. I have deep, yeah. deep, deep respect for each of you yeah, and likewise. the integrity. The, like one of the things we all jam about is, 
like a high vibration of integrity and authentic yeah. authenticity and honesty and you're going to get that for sure um, yeah. well, more than most people <laughs> have ever experienced in their in entire the life times history. three plus yeah. whoever you have assisting times however many people are there yeah and yeah. so it's it's dripping and oozing and <laughs> and you know one of the Soaking. things that um i have had so many people the the, the shamangelic breath work is what you guys came to yes and i have so have had so many people ask like hey i want to learn how to do this and so i have shifted my training dates they were going to be the first it's two weeks long one week was going to be in april and then the second in august now it's the last week in may is is week one and the first week in august is week two and um so i will i think i have two spots left for people that want to come and actually train with me on various hands-on healing tools and modalities and shamangelic breath work facilitator training nice. uh because i i feel that that's one of the most powerful modalities that i love to leverage and that's what you guys experienced mm -hmm. that was um, awesome it was awesome yeah so that more people can leverage that modality so that is listed there under offerings and under the calendar section if if that's your medicine and you want to like learn how to add some more things to your medicine bag i'm right here and i'm excited to do something with you guys soon yes yes, soon. yes. yes and for anyone listening right now watching don't forget to rate Review, subscribe, subscribe for the show on iTunes. Share yes, with yes. yes, you know this. There's so many people struggling right now, and they're consuming a lot of very heavy, um, just energies that are going to make it really hard to keep the immune system up. And this isn't about pretending that there aren't some real things going on. For sure, it's realizing that if we only focus on all the negative things going on, that's what grows. Right? Whatever you focus on is what comes really into the microscope um, and into your vision. So at least give yourself permission to have both. And as always, I love you so tremendously and, so and endlessly. And until next time, which is tomorrow, <laughs> be free.